All right, greetings and welcome to Solutions. This is our new flip unit. It's actually a very interesting unit because it's all about um, different things that will dissolve in other things or things that won't dissolve in other things. And it's kind of where we get into some of the fun aqueous chemistry. So um, this is Solutions with Miss Carr. This is going to be a fairly short uh, little kind of mini episode but it will it will have the information that you need to get started including some basic vocabulary the vocabulary we're going to be using in today's little episode is the parts of a solution okay first of all we really want to know what a solution is in the first place right so um, let's take a look at what the word solution actually means and when we say solution, we simply mean a substance where one substance is dissolved into another substance. And um, there are some other vocabulary words here. And that is the solvent. This is the part of the solution that is dissolving the other substance. This is also known as the dissolving medium. Okay. And the dissolving medium, and of course, we do have our universal solvent, which is H2O. And... So water is most frequently the solvent. You will uh, very seldom see water as anything but a solvent. That's why we call it the universal solvent, okay? Um, there are also many properties of water that we're going to discuss here in just a minute, which make it very good at um, dissolving other things. Also, solute. This is the part of the solution that is being dissolved. So for example, if we take our solution, um, of sugar water for example the water would be the solvent and the sugar would be the solute okay so um, this is the part of the solution that is being dissolved so you have to ask yourself is this dissolving or is it doing the dissolving um, and so the solute is the part of the solution being dissolved so if we had sugar water um, the solute would be the sugar. It is the stuff that, that gets dissolved. Okay. Solvation is just a word that we use to describe the process of dissolving, um, what actually is going on, what occurs when something dissolves. Okay. And solvated describes a solute that has already been dissolved. So if we say that there is a solvated solute, it means that the solute has been dissolved. Okay, um, so if we take a look at our, um, so that is our vo basic vocabulary for this um, first part of the unit. And these are the vocabulary words that you're going to see on the vocab list that I've, I've made for you. Okay, now if we take a look at what is, a, what is going on when we dissolve something, First, I want to take a moment to talk to you about that universal solvent when we talk about the, or, or look at the water molecule. Now, as you recall, your water molecule has one O and two H's, and it is polar, okay? And by polar, we mean that there is a negative end, which is the oxygen, because it hogs all of the electrons, remember? and the hydrogen end, which is slightly positive, okay? And remember this funny kind of crazy S8 symbol that we use to describe those dipoles, um, meaning that it's not really a negative charge, it's just more negative than the other side. So uh, when we draw a water molecule for the solvation process, I'm simply going to show it as this, and you can remember that the small end is where the this bent molecule, this small end is where the negative charge is and the, the branched end is where the positive charge is, okay? So the interesting thing about water is because it has a positive and a negative end, it can do a lot of really crazy stuff, but the first thing we're gonna talk about today is dissolving the process of of actually dissolving something so we're going to look at something that is very soluble in water and we're going to look at salt and salt as you may remember has these big chlorine ions and they have a negative charge and attracted to these chlorine ions are some 
sodium ions, and they have a little positive charge, or a, you know, one positive charge. So for every chlorine, you're going to have <clears throat> these the sodiums, and these negatives and positives attract each other to make this crystal formation, which is why salt looks the way that it does. So when we take a look at what happens in the process of solvation, okay, is that we have water molecules, and remember they have that negative charge and that positive charge, okay? And you'll notice that with this negative charge, with this negative charge here on the water, it's going to be attracted to this, or this positive charge on the water is going to be attracted to this negative charge on um, the chlorine ions in the salt. Okay. Now, what will actually uh, begin to occur if you put, say, this cube of salt into a solution of water, then you will begin to see these water molecules will come in and surround, in this case, one of the chlorines. So I'm going to show you what these water molecules are going to do and explain why this would happen, although you can probably figure it out by now because these water molecules have a slight positive charge on this end and the negative is, well, the chlorine ion is also negative. Now, what this is having to do is come in and be strong enough. Now, if the charge is strong enough to break the bonds that you would see here, these ionic bonds between the positive and negative charges of sodium and chlorine, if that pull is enough, that uh, the pull of the water is enough to pull these ions apart, then you'll begin to see more and more of these ions getting surrounded by molecules of water, okay? And so you have these ions that get surrounded by water molecules. Now, you may be saying, well, if this happens and the water comes in and basically strips out all of those chlorine ions, what's going to happen to our sodium ions? Okay, so you have your little sodium ions too. And if the chlorine is getting stripped away, well, these chlorine ions are going to have a an attraction to the water as well, only they're not going to be attracted to the same end. They're not going to be attracted to the positively charged end. Instead, they'll be attracted to the negatively charged end. Okay, and so our water molecules will surround and pull on those sodium ions as well. And this is what the process of dissolving actually is is simply the individual ions in an ionic compound. This is our ionic compound salt, all right? So in our ionic compound, what is happening is our water is coming in and surrounding each of these individual ions. Now, we can see this big cube of salt as a grain of salt, for example. It's a solid form. But then when we put it into water, it dissolves. It does this where the water surrounds each one of the ions and forms what we call an aqueous solution. Okay. So we talked about, about aqueous solutions briefly when we, discussed, um, when we discussed chemical reactions. And this is what this all means. And this is the reason that you can't see salt when it's dissolved into the water is because that salt is being broken down into its individual ions and each of those ions is getting surrounded by water. So that's the basic um, beginning to our discussion of, of solutions because that is the solvation process. That's what happens when something dissolves. Um, your next video is going to go more into detail about how do we know how much of something is dissolved into a solution. We'll also discuss um, concepts like concentration, molarity, um, we will discuss acids and bases, um, and this should be a very exciting unit. There's a lot of things that we can see and actually demonstrate in the lab, so you'll actually have some um, lab time for this as well. So that's all I have for today, and thank you very much for watching.